Welcome to Camping with Steve. All aboard, let's go camping. The long weekend is over. We have a Victoria Day in Canada here and everybody was camping. So we avoid that at all costs. Now it's Wednesday night and everybody's gone back to their homes and normal lives. So the campgrounds should hopefully be exclusively ours. So there's a little spot of which we know of down the road. We're bringing the bus out there and we're just gonna get this thing set up um, as appropriately as possible because right now it's just a bunch of camping gear thrown in the back of a school bus. fairly far down a logging road or a resource road there are um, a lot of oil wells down oil leases down this road as well uh, it's mostly crown land which is public land but there is a recreation site we have been here before but not in many years we have no idea if it's busy but there is a lake uh, makes me wish I brought my fishing stuff with me but, These roads, I am just itching to explore every little side road. Uh, the bus performs very good on these roads. We got new tires all the way around, balanced, and uh, got an alignment done. This thing is ready for duty. Let's check out this campground, and I'll go over the bus when we get parked, and I'll show you what we've done and what we are doing. This place looks deserted. That is awesome. It sure wasn't like this last week, I can tell you that. This would have been jam-packed, but yeah, I think, oh, there's one one vehicle here, but I think they're just fishing. They don't even have a, a tent or anything. Awesome, look at this. We'll be the only people here tonight. Before I even register for this campsite, I'm getting the jackery going. This place is legendary for mosquitoes. That's half the reason I didn't mind kind of doxing it. I normally keep them secret, which uh, rec sites we're going to, but if you guys want to check out Minnow Lake in Alberta, um, bring bug spray. That's all I can say. And this will hopefully gas the area out of all these bugs because I'm going to have to get into the back and wire up another battery. Our beloved Jackery has died on us and we were using that to run a little portable bar fridge. So I'm back to the drawing board. I kind of got a couple of deep cycle batteries and an inverter that I'm going to rig up and hopefully not kill the batteries. But we also have a generator on board there. So we'll, we'll go over the bus in greater detail as soon as these Skeeters uh, clear the area here. And of course, <laughs> yeah, well, we got the shelter set up for the night. So step two is a delicious, uh, delicious, nutritious Pilsner. And step three is going to be to register the campground. This thing's actually doing a pretty decent job. So let's dig into here and I'll show you what we got uh, set up here. Crazy neighbor had been a fantastic help getting all of this set up. This is definitely a two-man job to get a lot of this done. And we actually kind of left on this trip before we had everything as perfectly set up as I want. But had to leave or else we'd never get out camping. We'll definitely get a more convenient setup. Ta-da! We got the Champion uh, dual fuel 3400 watt inverter generator. And that was pricey. Uh, I normally go for the cheapest possible thing I can buy that would almost do the job. But given that 
we have propane at our house and we lose our power quite often in the country, I thought, well, I'll grab this thing just in case we can run that off of propane or gas. So we got three 20 pound cylinders here, locked up with a bicycle lock. Uh, and this is all chained up, good and secure. Uh, but yeah, this, this will do just fine. I'm gonna get this started uh, so that we can so that we can uh, keep our food good in the fridge. Uh, until I get the whole battery thing set up, this will have to do, and we'll eventually be putting uh, some solar on as well so that we can do things uh, a little more sustainably without having to go run out and grab more propane all the time. Okay, it's not the most quiet, but it's still pretty good, um, in my opinion. So We're tucked away back there in the campsite. I am going to register. Beautiful Wife is domesticating it and turning it from a bunch of shopping that got dumped onto the bed into something livable. So let's go register and uh, walk around this campsite a bit. Then we'll get a fire going. Oh, 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 oh. Looks like we could see a storm. Uh, a little rain tonight, maybe, possibly. Who knows? Let's see. Let's see what happens. Now, self-registration booth. Uh, it's the honor system. And the penalty is $28 a night to camp here. Uh, unfortunately, they're out of envelopes uh, that I can write my information on and pay. And I don't want to just dump money into this thing um, without them knowing exactly who put it there. So, we'll, uh, hopefully the bill collector comes by and we can just give them money. They got water here. Don't drink it. Okay. We are in bear country. And that means both black bears and grizzly bears are possible in this area. So, Thankfully, we're in a hard-sided camper tonight, so that, that's awesome news. Um, I did see this list of finds, because uh, people ask why I bring firewood or why I buy it instead of just chopping something down or taking some dead stuff in the woods. Uh, the fine for removing trees or deadfall from the forest to burn it in your campfire, 287 bucks. They are not messing around. And a failure to register, which we didn't because there's no envelopes, $115. So. We've got the money sitting on the dashboard waiting for somebody to hopefully come by and collect that because if not, this video is just incriminating myself here and I don't want that fine. That fellow has just taken his boat out of the lake and I know we want to see this lake. Oh, I wish I brought a boat. Uh, it is not a huge lake, but it is a really clean looking lake. There's not a lot of weeds or anything. Uh, pretty okay boat launch right there. Uh, it's wooded the whole way around. A uh, beautiful lake by the looks of it. Uh, the birds are going ballistic here. I think there's loons in there as well. Uh, and there's gotta be fish. It's called Minnow Lake, so minnows at the very least, I guess. Uh, but those clouds are starting to look uh, I don't know if the exposure will show those clouds okay. Uh, believe me, there could be trouble coming tonight. So we'll get back to the bus. We'll start a little fire. We'll do the grand tour of the bus. Beautiful wife is gonna have that domesticated definitely by now. She has uh, got the woman's touch there. If it was left to me, that thing would literally just be a filthy mattress lying on the ground with a can of beans. So let's get back. Big pin in the ground survey post. I love finding these things. Uh, I do believe this is where the crown land technically ends at the lake and the campground side begins. So it's always fun to see these little things tucked away in the woods. Okay. Well, this solves the mystery about the fish. There's walleye, the limit is zero. Northern pike, limit is zero. If you like yellow perch, you're in luck. You can have 15 of those guys here. It has been a busy few weeks on the bus and I'll give you guys a rundown on what we've done exactly here. We had uh, hitch receivers installed on the front and the back, and that's gonna allow us to use this winch in case we get stuck. Uh, it's a 9,000 pound winch we found uh, on the Canadian version of Craigslist, Kijiji. Uh, it was a reasonable price. Um, what did we get this? $500, I believe, um, for the winch. Uh, it's been used like once, so it's in really good shape. We have, uh, one of these big Anderson uh, connectors here. So 
when we move the winch to the front or the back, we can plug it in uh, either side. In the back, we've got a 20,000 pound hitch receiver, and uh, they're all locked on with locking pins. We got uh, six new tires on it, because uh, I don't want any problems. I know it was a big investment. These are rated for severe service. Uh, we got the most aggressive uh, tires they could legally put on this bus, and uh, new steer tires in the front, uh, all nicely balanced, uh, and an alignment done on this thing too. Around back, we have another one of these Anderson connectors, and that goes to the the battery in the back. There's actually two of them in the back right now, two uh, deep cycles, and this hooks right into them if we were to use the winch back here. So what I like to do actually is charge the batteries right through this Anderson connector, with the battery charger, while the generator is running. So that just goes on like so, charges everything up. We have room on the back rack here, this uh, sport rack. Uh, I picked this up because this is just too much to put in the bus. It's not a big bus. And um, each one of these 20 pound cylinders can actually run this thing for close to 15 hours on a 25% load. Bugs aren't giving up. Um, and that's awesome. That beats coming to fill it up with gas. Of course, if I needed to, I could put gas in it. It does provide more energy uh, out of the gas than the propane. Uh, it's about 10% less power with the propane. But uh, yeah, 15 hours to not have to worry about it. I can actually leave this going all night probably uh, with the AC on a super hot night. And then we don't have to deal with jerry cans. You always get messy, it always spills. Uh, I think this is great. Uh, and yeah, we've got this thing rigged up basically for this remote overlanding uh, off-roading, logging road type of thing. Um, we've got tire chains as well. I haven't actually put them on yet. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna practice that because I've never put tire chains on before. But um, we'll go inside in a bit here after I start a fire um, to hopefully drive away some of these biting insects. Come on, guys. These little portable barbecues are one of the best things you can take camping. They don't take up much room. You can grill on them. I've used it, uh, I put a pan on it and cooked bacon. You can uh, use it as an oven almost. Uh, they're fantastic, but my old one broke after many years of service. And it was also the cheapest one I could have bought at Walmart. So I've upgraded a little bit with a slightly better one from Canadian Tire. I was gonna set it up today until I saw the number of pieces involved. And that looks like a project for future Steve. And uh, we were on a spending spree for getting this bus outfitted a lot more than I anticipated we were gonna spend. I'm sure they probably thought I was using a stolen credit card or something. That cart was heaped, but we got uh, a toaster oven slash air fryer. I know Forresty Forrest has been using his air fryer. He's had really good luck with it. Um, mine isn't as good as his. It's a kind of a cheap version because I'm Steve, but uh, it, it claims to air fry. We'll see how that works. And uh, yeah, let's get this fire going. <laughs> All the boxes from stuff we had to buy today, uh, power inverter and stuff, perfect kindling. And this is from our home wood pile. Actually looks like the neighbor back over there left some wood at that campsite from the last time they were out here. And we may have to dip into that if this, uh, if this wood doesn't get us through cooking. So. Oh yeah. Oh no. Welcome to the bus, which is very much still a work in progress, but beautiful wife has really dressed it up nicely here. Uh, it doesn't look like a serial killer's van anymore. Um, I guess we'll begin with um, these lights. 
little decorative gardeny LED light things. Um, they're about 10 watts a string times two strings, so that's about 20 watts of LED lighting in here. Big upgrade was the bed. Before I was using a couple of cots when I took Crazy Neighbor out for a trip, and we'll put those back if I'm bringing him on a trip again. We're not going to be sharing a bunk together, but uh, we upgraded that. I got one of these memory foam. It's a eight inch memory foam uh, mattress from Walmart. It's one of those ones that coils up real tight and then is supposed to poof up to eight inches when you open it up, and it did. Uh, that's resting on a piece of plywood, and that's held up by a, uh, a cot. I don't mind the junk under there. It is uh, storage for us. Coming around to this side, we got uh, this cooler here is uh, it's actually just full of tools because we don't have a toolbox. Uh, we got the air conditioner that's running off of the uh, generator in the back and yeah it's just a regular portable house air conditioner. We got that bungee tied onto the, the wall there and then we just routed this vent out the window and taped it off with our good friend Gorilla Tape. So. Uh, moving right along to the Jackery. This started working again for us and yeah, Working kind of We were running the fridge off that but it seems to turn off the uh, The AC outlet after a certain while but the problem we were finding was I was using one of these little plug-in inverters to uh, keep the Jackery charged and it's a This is not a pure sine wave inverter, and I think it was causing a problem with the uh, with the power source there so now it's working again so I just bought a whole bunch of batteries and another inverter which I didn't really need but um, we're, we're fully juiced now with power uh, this disaster here is what we're using for a kitchen right now and yes that is just a normal household bar fridge uh, it's uh, ratchet strapped onto the seat uh, with a piece of wood down there uh, this is the foresty forest inspired uh, air fryer uh, a super cheap version. There's nothing really to brag about there. Um, it uh, air fries, toasts, whatnot. We've got a little kettle. We can make some tea in the morning, which we will. I like my Earl Grey tea. Um, I don't do coffee because I get the heartburn. But uh, aside from that, yeah, these uh, these magnetical hooks that hold everything on, they do a really good job. And you can see they're even holding up winter coats pretty successfully. Um, so that's what we got now. Uh, we're we're gonna continue to get this set up a little bit better. This is just the first night out. We had to like get away from the house because uh, I'm getting sucked into all the work again. Uh, so I, I've like crazy neighbor kind of take care of the place for a couple of weeks with all the workers and the laborers and the garbage bins and stuff. And then when I get back, me and him will go on a trip. So um, hopefully the house will be a little bit closer to being completed. But let's see, oh, that fire is still just smoking away. And uh, yeah, beautiful wife uh, wanted to not be in the video because she doesn't, uh, she does not want to be exactly on YouTube. People can be a little mean sometimes, so that's not her cup of tea. All right. Today it's just uh, prepping some dinner time. Uh, hobo foil pouches. I got the recipe from Spend with Pennies. Uh, it's always a good site for types of thrifty meals that can be quite easy to prepare. So for this one, diced up potatoes, carrots, three second rule. Um, you know, put in some onion. We got red onion because that's left over from last week's video. Mushrooms, why not? They're always good. And recipe wants olive oil. We got that to spray. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Calls for salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Now I have this spike gourmet seasoning. I'm going to use that because. Forgot onion 
uh, garlic powder. Uh, freshly cracked open container of pepper. Pepper that up. Okay. Top it off with a ground beef patty. This patty is just uh, ground beef with onion soup mix. One pound of ground beef, one package of onion soup mix. But that's all online on that recipe. Um, I just got a Google spend with pennies. Um, actually, it's the first recipe that shows up for hobo foil pouches. And some condensed cream mushroom soup on the top. Voila! Doesn't look good now, but uh, it'll probably taste good judging by the 4.9 star review. And make up a couple of these. It says you can do them in the oven or on the campfire. So we're going to be doing the campfire unless we run out of wood. Then we'll do the toaster oven. So double layer of foil. Hopefully prevent it from becoming scorched. And ta-da, just like that. Make up a couple others. So we got leftovers. Doesn't get better than that. Ow, my knee. Okay. Gonna dig into this uh, this mess here. Beautiful wife already had hers. The results were positive. And I've got this humongous version of this. Oh, it smells fantastic. It looks, and I'll show you. Obviously, it looks questionable. It is a hobo, a hobo tin pouch, but mm, can't go wrong with those ingredients. Uh, you know, the onion soup in with the burger, the mushroom soup on there. Mm hmm. Yeah, five thumbs up. Probably the appropriate amount of time on the fire is 45 minutes or so. But uh, mm. now this is a hearty meal. And uh, <clears throat> we've got the generator running and that's charging up the house batteries now because they are showing 75%, which is not too good. Um, the Jackery is not really keeping the refrigerator running. So we're going to be switching stuff over tomorrow. We're going to be doing a, a few weeks traveling around in this. We're going to have some stealth camping videos up as well. Because along the way, why not do some stealth camping? That's good. So, of course, we have to thank the folks that have donated to the Beer Donation Fund. And, uh, you know, of course, some of it goes to all this other stuff because um, people have spoken. They want to see us out on these adventures. So it's all becoming very possible thanks to uh, thanks to you fine folks here, my friends. And uh, yeah, I'm going to curl into bed here. Uh, this is the very first day we've had this kind of set up. We are going to be hitting some logging roads, um, going probably south and then north in Alberta here so we're gonna be seeing quite a bit of um, quite a bit of uh, different places that we haven't gone to and if you guys uh, know of any places please let me know in the comments and we'll try to uh, check them out and see what we can see because this is all new for us I have not been in a vehicle like this in quite a while um, it's been the back of the car camping or uh, the screen tent, etc., the ice fishing tent. Uh, having an actual hard sided, livable vehicle to do these explorations from is just primo. We were just talking about it this evening, and this has really rekindled a sense of adventure for, for both of us here. And we can go pretty much anywhere with this thing. It's not four wheel drive, but it's about as close as you can get. Locking rear diff on here, uh, the winch, the tire chains, brand new tires on it. Uh, we are going to be going some places. 
So, thank you all for watching. Gonna chow down here, hit the hay, and we'll be up in the morning to get a few other things, uh, get the video edited, and uh, yeah, can't wait for this. This is gonna be the best two or three weeks uh, that I've ever had. Don't have to worry about the house. Crazy neighbors taking care of that. We're just thrilled. So, cheers all. Yeah, all this, uh, the whole bus and all these type of things, they all kind of come, it all starts with just daydreaming it. This was an imagination, uh, and then it's turned into reality here. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna tuck in, have a good sleep, and uh, we'll see you all in the morning. Such a good mattress. Such a good mattress. Good morning, world. Uh, this mattress is better than the one we got at home. I could uh, I could lay here all day long, just leisurely snoozing away. But that's not going to get a video uploaded. So time to start the day going. Yeah, we're just packing up here. We're probably gonna head out towards the mountains today. Uh, we're just kind of going where the wind blows us. And I wanna do some stealth camping in a new town. I haven't done that in ages. So uh, we're gonna find somewhere that looks acceptable, scope around, and uh, we'll see what we can do there. And thanks for watching these adventures. If you wanna see uh, the continued escapades, please consider subscribing. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll pack up here. We're hitting the road, guys. So. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be throwing some stuff on the Steve Wallace Step 2 channel as well because we got all this time away from the house. So I'm going to be filming uh, more little campground reviews, that type of thing, uh, behind the scenes stuff on that channel. So stay tuned and uh, thanks for following along, guys. Nobody ever came by, but uh, I will pay. <laughs> Twenty-eight bucks. At least keep the gates on this place open and uh, and the folks working here. So we'll see you guys next week.